Let's open some doors, ascend to the heavens, and let's get stopped by some fences and add all those blocks to Minecraft. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses, such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles, and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. Oh. Right, we found ourselves back in Intelligent once more, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding all of those non block blocks to Minecraft. This means stairs, slabs, buttons, pressure plates, fences, fence gates, walls, doors, and trapdoors all in this tutorial. Now, luckily, after last tutorial where we added the data gen, this is going to be much, much easier than you might expect. But first of all, we have to start by actually adding the blocks right here, and then we can talk about the data gen afterwards. So for this, I will just be copying over the sapphire block over here once, and this is going to be the sapphire stairs, and then changing the name over here, sapphire stairs. And then what we can actually do is literally just duplicate this a couple of times. So let's duplicate this once. And then we're going to need this two or more times. And then we're going to need this another three times. And then once we have this, we're going to need this another two times because that is going to be all of the different blocks that we're going to add. Let's start at the very top over here with the Sapphire Stairs. Of course, Sapphire Stairs is the name and then changing the name here as well. And this is going to be a stair block in this case. First parameter is actually going to be a supplier of the block that this is made of, which is going to be modblocks.sapphireblock.get. So there you go. And then actually the get.default state. There you go. That's what you want to do. So you want the default block state of the sapphire block. Unsure why this is the case, but uh, apparently it is. So there you go. And the rest here should be actually fine. Then we continue to the sapphire slab. This is the, the slab and not the slabs. This is just the normal way to name them. This is going to be a slab block and it requires no additional parameters in the block behavior properties. Then we're going to have the sapphire button. So we're going to have a custom button over here. Please always make sure to rename the name over here. Otherwise, you will run into an error. This is going to be a button block and the button block has as a second parameter something different. And also, we're not going to copy the iron block we're going to copy the button and namely, we're just going to get the stone button over here copied over. And then we are going to have the second parameter, which is the block set type. In this case, I want this to work like iron. So we're just going to choose iron here in this case. So basically, the idea is the block set type. I'm not even sure what that one necessarily does for the button. Let's just middle mouse button click here and you can see that it has a type. Oh, it literally just does the sound. I'm pretty sure that would make sense. And then the question is, okay, how long is this pressed? This is the next parameter. This is going to be, for example, 10. So now it's going to be 10 ticks for how long it's going to be pressed. And then a true over here just asks whether or not an arrow can also press this button. And in this case, I want this to be true. Then we have a sapphire pressure underscore plate. And of course, here changing the name as well to sapphire underscore pressure underscore plate. There we go, which is a pressure plate block here in this case, which takes in a another first parameter which is the sensitivity you can see if i start typing in sensitivity you can either say everything or mobs in this case i think everything is actually totally fine we're going to once again be okay with this and then after the amethyst sound over here we're also wants to add another parameter and that is the block set type again and we're once again going to choose iron here in this case and that should be fine now we get to the fences and the like. So this is going to be the sapphire fence. And this is going to be the sapphire fence here as well, which is a fence block, which requires no additional parameters to be added. Similar to the fence underscore gate, although this one actually does require something else. Of course, once again, changing the name here, fence gate. And this is the fence gate block. And this actually requires as a second parameter, which is going to be this a sound event. So this is the sound event start. Let's do chain place. I think that that's a good event over here. That's a good name. And then this is going to be the sound event start anvil break. So for whatever reason, if we middle mouse button click on this, you can see this takes in an open sound and a closed sound. And why not just use some crazy sounds over here? I think that that's kind of cool. Then we have the sapphire wall because sometimes you also want to add some walls into the game. This is, of course, a wall block. And this one requires no additional parameters as well. And then lastly, we got the door and the trap door. So this is going to be the door right here. This is the sapphire underscore door. And this is going to be... And then first of all, let's not go get too hasty over here. This is a door block which takes in a second parameter. And that is going to be the block set type again. Now this actually does determine functionality of the door. 
if you pass in the block set type of iron, then as you can see right here, the number one, it's going to give you certain events and also can open by hand. If you take iron or gold, it cannot be opened by hand while with stone and or, you know, the other other types of wood, it can be opened by hand. So do keep that in mind. So this way, the door can only be opened with redstone if you put in block set type of iron. And similarly, the trap door is going to be a similar case. This is going to be the sapphire trap door right here. And of course, this is a trap door block. There we go. Similarly, this one takes in the same second parameter, which is the block set type. And we're going to choose iron here as well. And with that, we have everything set up. So as you can see, quite a few blocks. All of the code, as always, of course, is available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository. And now the question is, well, what are we going to need? So first of all, I'm going to add the translation as well as the texture over here or the textures just so that we don't forget this. So let's add the translation. Really isn't anything too crazy, right? It's literally just taking each of the different names over here and then translating them. So nothing crazy. And then when it comes to the textures, a similar thing happens. We don't actually have a lot of textures. We only have three block textures. These are going to be the ones for the door. So the bottom and the top door and the trap door texture, as well as the door texture as an item, because in the inventory, the door is displayed as a singular texture over here. And the rest of the blocks, right, the stairs, the slabs and so on, they all take their texture from the sapphire, not the sapphire ore, but the sapphire block. So they all are going to look like this. But then we get to the data gen because, well, we need all sorts of JSON files. So number one in our block state provider, that is the first step and here we're going to need all sorts of things. So we want to say stairs block and we want to pass in mod blocks dot sapphire stairs dot get dot cast. And we want to cast this to a stair block over here. Very important. And then after the second closing parenthesis, we can say block texture mod blocks dot sapphire block dot get. There we go. And now that we have one, we can almost just duplicate this. So we're going to duplicate this, then use the slab right here. And we're going to cast this into a slab block. And instead of the stair block method, we're going to call the slab block method. And instead of one texture right here, we actually need a second one. So we're just going to duplicate that. And there we go. Let's copy the stairs twice over here, because then we have a button block. And we also have a pressure plate block. There we go. It's going to be a button block. Always make sure to change what you're casting over here as well. Otherwise, you're just going to get an error and you're going to have to fix it afterwards anyway. So it's not going to be too bad, but just be sure to change this. So there you go. And that's going to be fine as well. And then we have all of the fence stuff, which is literally going to be a similar thing to this. So we can actually duplicate this a couple of times as well. This is the fence block. And then we have the fence, fence gate block. This is the fence gate block. And we have the wall block. There we go. This is going to be the fence block. Nope, this is a fence block. There you go. This is a fence gate block. And this is a wall block. And of course, don't forget to change the actual block over here. This is the fence gate. And this is the wall, the sapphire wall. The rest here is fine. And then the door and the trap door are a little bit crazy because the door block actually needs door block with render type. And then, of course, this is still a door block cast and this is still going to be the sapphire door. However, the this is not going to be the block textures. What we're actually going to have is we're going to have some crazy things. And that is the mod lock. This is the mod location of this specific thing. And that is block slash sapphire underscore door underscore bottom. And we can duplicate this. And this is then the top of the door. And then the last parameter is going to be a normal string and this is going to be cut out. And then we can actually duplicate this for the trap door with render type. Of course, this is a trap door block and this is the sapphire trap door. And then this is going to be the sapphire trap door. This instead is going to be a true because we're going to make it orientable and the cutout stays the same. And this is actually all of the different things that we need in the block states slash block models. Now, as you can clearly see, most of this is pretty straightforward. We literally just call the specific method. We're casting our block into that specific block type, right? So always make sure stairs, 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 slab, 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 button, button, button. 
We have the pressure plate and the pressure plate. We have the fence and the fence. We have the fence gate and the fence gate. We have the wall and the wall. We have the door, the door and the trap door and the trap door. Absolutely awesome. Now, the reason why we need these specific things for the door is because while well, the door doesn't point to the sapphire block texture, it points specifically to the sapphire underscore door underscore bottom and the sapphire underscore door underscore top. And also they need to be cut out because if you look at the, sorry, at the top texture over here, this is alpha values, right? So that you can look through this particular door through the other side. And if you don't add the cutout over here, then it's just going to be white basically and you can't look through it which is of course not quite what you want in that same vein this is also quite important we're going to double back to the door over here if you don't copy a door block you also want to call no occlusion right here otherwise you will be able to basically look through the world so you're going to have an x-ray mod with this which is definitely not something you want so be sure to call the no occlusion on both the door and the trap door Otherwise, you will get that weird basically looking through blocks. Of course, we're not done quite just yet. In the mod block tag generator, we now need to add our fence, our wall, and our fence gate. This is extremely important, so please pay attention. Under You want to add this under block tags.fences. This is where you want to add the fence. Not the fence gate, but the fence. There you go. You can duplicate this twice. We're going to add another thing to the fence gates and to the walls as well. So this is going to be the fence gate over here, and this is going to be the sapphire wall. If you don't add this, then they will not connect with each other. So if your fence, if your custom fence does not connect with each other, then that means that you have not added it to the fences tag. Extremely important. Do keep that in mind. And now we get to the item models, which actually will require three custom methods, because for some reason, Forge doesn't have a proper way to add a fence item, a button item, and a wall item. I don't know why, but it is what it is. So we're just going to use my custom methods over here that I've created. There you go. If you know of a reason that this might work with the custom item model provider as well, please do feel free to leave me a comment. Otherwise, just copy over the three methods over here from the GitHub repository and you're going to be fine. And then we also actually need another method and that is for the block item. That's not too bad as well. That's going to be the simple block item over here. I'm going to call the simple block item. This is for modblocks.sapphire door. Uh, we don't even need to call the get. There you go. This is for the, well, just the door item, basically. And then we can call the fence item over here for modblocks.sapphire fence. And then this is going to be modblocks.sapphire block here in this case, because that's the texture of the base block. You can just duplicate this a couple of times, call the button item here and the wall item here. And once again, don't forget to change this. This is the sapphire button and this is the sapphire wall. So once again, fence, fence, button, button wall wall absolutely friggin' fantastic and then this is also properly added as well and of course because we've added a couple of blocks we need to add them to the loot tables otherwise we're gonna get errors now luckily most of them literally just drop themselves so we're just going to well add all of those so you can see stair button pressure plate trap door fence fence gate and wall all drop themselves except the only two different ones are the slabs as well as the door. That should make a lot of sense to you because, well, number one, the door is actually two different blocks. So obviously that's do it a little bit differently. And then the slab is it's sort of like also two blocks. If you have like a, a two slabs on top of each other, it forms a full block. So of course that would be, be a little bit different, right? So we're going to have this dot add mod blocks dot sapphire slab dot get. And then it's going to be the block function over here, which is going to be a create slab item table. And we're going to say modblocks.sapphireslab.get. There we go. And we can just duplicate this and then change it to the door. So this is going to be the sapphire door. This is going to be the sapphire door right here. There we go. And then instead of a slab item, this is going to be the door table, create door table method. There we go. And that should pretty much be everything that we're going to need. Yeah, overall, I'm looking at this and I think that this is going to be fine. So we can now run the data over here and I'm going to show you why um, the data gen for specifically the fences and the stairs and so on is so incredibly important because, well, you're going to be amazed how many JSON files are going to be created via the like nine blocks over here. Uh, yeah, you're going to be, you're going to, I think you're going to fall out of your chair. There it is. So you're going to have 54 different JSON files just for these nine different blocks. That is craziness. And you can see if, so for example, in the block states, right, where, for example, the slab is you know, that's not too bad. Uh, well, look at the button. <laughs> look at this insanity, okay? You're going to add this for every button? Imagine you have like 12 buttons. That would be craziness. And then not only that, then you also have 
look at how many different block models there are for the door for example there's the left and the left open and the bottom right and the bottom right open and the left and the left open and it just keeps on freaking going it never stops so basically as soon as you have any of these like buttons or stairs or something like that if you have one set of them i guess that's fine you can still do it manually but as, as soon as you have like two or three sets of them i highly recommend doing data gen i mean in this case really you should follow the tutorials anyway with data gen i can just promise you even though it might take a lot of time to set up once uh, doing this manually you get the time back in no time all right but that's pretty much everything we're going to need except for still adding all of the blocks to the creative mode tab and then we should be good to go there we go all of them added to the creative mode tab and i guess let's jump into the game and see if it works all right, Francis is back in Minecraft and let's take a look and oh boy, there are some issues here. But first and foremost, you can see so the button, the fences, the wall and the door all work except the trap door, the fence gate, the slab, the stair and the pressure plates for some reason have no item textures. Fascinating. So indeed, it has not generated the item model JSON files for the stairs and some other ones. I am genuinely unsure why this is the case. Uh, for right now, I think that let's just run data one more time to see if there was like an issue over here. And if it's not the case, I'm genuinely confused. Okay, so I genuinely don't know why the uh, item models here are not being created on every other test I have, on every other like project I have, when I use the stairs block method right here and it calls the stairs block internal right here, it, it, it generates them automatically. So it, it is all the same methods. I don't know why it doesn't do that. So I guess... If it doesn't do that for you as well, so if the stairs and the slabs and stuff like that is not being generated right here for you in the item models, then you have to add them manually. All right, I threw out all of the item models again, and I've changed this up so that in theory, this should be now working more or less. So let's run the data again and see if all of our custom item models are being generated. So this is a... I, I don't know what it is, but there seems to be a constant struggle of data gen just never working exactly how I want it to. But there you go. It is what it is. At least sometimes that is the case in Forge. But there we go. So now the item models are added manually. If you don't have this issue, by the way, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But um, yeah, sometimes data gen is just kind of strange, at least in Forge. But it is what it is. Now with this added, we should be good to go and we can now jump into the game and see if everything works now. All right, found us back in Minecraft and let's just take a look and there we go. Everything here successfully added finally. So let's just set down some of our stairs and you can see they work like absolutely normal stairs. We also got some slabs over here. We, we can even double up over here. Absolutely awesome. The fences, they connect because we've added it to the fences tag. Very important. Similar to the walls over here, you can see. They connect totally fine, and if I were to place down a fence gate over here, that also works totally fine. The doors and the trap doors all work with pressure plates. They don't work if I right-click them, as you can see, that does not work. And the button also works, and it's only on for like half a second, which is pretty interesting. So that is a thing that you can probably also do pretty cool stuff with. And yeah, there you go. That is going to be all of the different things added to Minecraft. There we go. That's going to be for this tutorial right here. Next time, we're going to make a custom item with a 2D texture and a 3D item model. That's going to be right here. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.